welcome to my channel. Thank you, Never Blooming, for being a part of this YouTuber and like, share, subscribe, and as my oldest son says, hit that bell <laughs> so you can get notified when I go live and take personal readings online and release new videos and all that good stuff. Um, if you're coming back, hi, I missed you so much and I'm glad you're here. <laughs> um, if you guys want a personal reading, I've got very few spots for December open, but info's in the description box below on how to email me for that. Um, I'll try to work it out for you. If you guys want to skip this little intro that I'm about to give, all right, there's a timestamp in the bottom. You can skip straight to the reading. It's a very weird one today. All right, I suggest that you go to my new channel. All right, the also will be info in the description box for that too. And also on my main page, there's a link to it as well. I started that channel this week. You can get in on the ground floor and be part of the weird little coven over there. I do a full unboxing of this strange ass deck. All right, and I go very deep into what the hell it means, okay? Because you're gonna see it and it's gonna make no sense to you, all right? There's only 20 cards in it and it's um, literally, all right? It's called the Fanted Deck. And it is meant, all right, Fanted, first of all, I had to Google it, your girl didn't know, and I have a doctorate degree. Um, Fantad, uh, Fantad, or I'm not really sure I'm saying this right. Give me a pronunciation, pronunciation. Fantad. Fantod, the Fantod deck, all right, by Edward Gorey. Bizarre, all right, beautifully bizarre. The Scorpio in me is like living for this, okay? Anyways, Fantod is a state of attack or uneasiness or unreasonableness, okay? So it's basically like meant to predict the tower moment that's coming for you. And that's what we're going to do today. All right. I'm going to do that for the collective. So if you want to skip to the main read and skip this little intro that I'm going to give explaining everything, um, go ahead and do that. If you want a more in-depth description for my real true tarot fans, please go to my new channel and watch that very in-depth video that I did unboxing this. Okay. Um, so, all right. The deck, basically what I just said, the Fantod deck. It is um, a state of attack or uneasiness or unreasonableness, all right? It's chaos, basically. You feel like you're under attack. It doesn't make any sense. It's nonsense, okay? It's restlessness. It's tower moments. It's uncomfortable change <clears throat> that you did not ask for. Um, the, there's a, uh, please go watch the unboxing video because I can't explain it all or I will never get any sleep tonight. Um, there's a spread in here, basically. It's meant to, you know, predict what horrible things are coming your way and they made this amazing joke at the beginning about like now that you've seen all of the horrors that have come to your friends and family after reviewing all of their christmas cards don't you want to know what misfortune is heading your way i was dying y'all because i can't stand those damn christmas cards where they pose their family all stupid perfect looking and then they send you like a two-page letter about oh doug jr is going to you know be an honor band next year and little you know debbie sue just cut her sixth tooth he 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 little chipmunk it's just like shut the fuck up all right if i wanted to keep up with you i would just google you all right you're doing that for attention you're doing that because you want validation you're doing that because you want to brag about your family and like i mean just come on all right I, um whatever <laughs> all right and with that being said okay <laughs> mm. The spread, it's completely ridiculous. The method that you're supposed to do <laughs> to pick the cards for the spread, the spread is the size, it's a cross, it's five cards. It's basically like the center of a Celtic, all right? The best that I can, you know, figure here. But it literally tells you to take the cards into a room that has very little to no furniture, all right? Already insane never had a deck ask me to do that okay and then it says after that close your eyes in this room with no furniture shuffle the deck all right in your hands and then hold it in your left hand and then literally all right ridiculously enough throw it up into the air with your eyes still closed mind you okay and then you're supposed to with your eyes still closed feel around on the floor for five cards and keep them in the order that you find them. 
for your reading, all right? And then you lay the first card out in the center. That's supposed to be like the main focus, the main problem, whatever. Then the second card is at the top of the spread. That is what's from the past that, you know, is affecting everything right now. Um, the third card is over here on the left. That is your inner self. The fourth card is over here on the right. That is the outer world, how the outside influences are playing into this. And then at the very bottom of the cross spread is what you don't see coming. All right. Sirens are going off. And a helicopter. Perfect time to talk about calamity. All right. So let's get into it, collective. I actually did. All right. This ridiculous ritual, which I fucking laughed the whole time I was doing it. I live for stuff like this. I love quirky, eccentric people. By the way, Edward Gorey was a Pisces. Okay. Um, anyways, this is gonna be your collective reading. I went into my bathroom, okay? Because I have laughs too. There's no furniture in there except my throne. <laughs> so I went in there. I did exactly what he said to do. And these sirens are getting louder. Um, I did exactly what he said to do. I closed my eyes. I shuffled the cards and held them in my hand, in my left hand. And then I threw them bitches into the air. And I picked up five cards for you. And I have them right here. So I don't have to do that on camera, obviously. All right. So let's get to it, all right? Collective, here is your Edward Gorey Fantod Pack Calamity reading about what tower to expect coming your way. What's the next show you're gonna be involved in? You know, what's the next fire you're gonna have to put out? Oh my God, it's bad. Do you hear the sirens? They're just getting louder. It is the witching hour too when I'm doing this, by the way. I got off my live from the TV tarot, all right? And I just was all geeked and everything, so I wanted to knock it out. Sounds like, and also I hear my neighbors aren't going downstairs. It's like 4 a.m. This is some crazy energy. Y'all, I'm telling you, the planets are doing such weird stuff right now. People are just choosing violence and choosing like um, fear. We have to stop, all right? I do keep sensing something wicked this way comes. I do. Maybe we can head it off at the pass, collective, all right? So I'm going to read for the collective now, and then I'm going to do all 12 signs because I can't not do that with this weird-ass deck. And for the love of God, will you please go watch that unboxing video? I put so much time and effort into that, okay? All right, so these are the cards that I pulled for you after groveling rolling around on my bathroom floor trying to feel them out and find them and they were everywhere um <clears throat> the first one i got that's in the center of your reading which is like the problem all right the main focus or whatever that's going on here or what the disaster might be related to or you know how do you themed around was the c such a simple picture but as an intuitive reader all right i see so much with this it's scary, all right? Water is emotions, water is cup energy. At the center of everything collective, all right? Overwhelming emotions, emptiness, all right? Fear of abandonment. Imagine being in the middle of that sea. You don't see land anywhere. There's no boats anywhere. You don't know how close you are to shore, if you're far away or if you're near. Um, You're disoriented, okay? One of my greatest fears in life is being left in the middle of the ocean, that and like being buried alive. I can't think of two things that are any more terrifying other than like being alone in space. The vastness, all right, of the ocean and stuff like that is overwhelming in the center of everything. But look how little the waves are here and how stark this white space is. I have to take that into consideration too. By the way, Edward Gorey was like highly revered in artistic circles as well as literary ones. Not only was his, you know, poetry and all that stuff celebrated, but his art was. And this is so simple. First of all, I get Aquarian energy from this. It's literally your sign with the waves right there at the center of everything. We got this Aquarian energy. We got a bunch of blank space here. I immediately got Taylor Swift blank space. I'm supposed to intuitively look at these cards first is what they instruct you on in the book. Before I go to the book and get the meaning that they're suggesting, all right, and it's just a suggestion as well. It's a starting off point. It's meant to get your mind working. 
um, you're supposed to intuitively glean what you're feeling from it first, which for readers like me is perfect. All right, it's like the, um, I get Aquarian energy with this. I get Ace of Cups energy in reverse with this, okay? Because the emotions are fairly confusing. There's a lot up in the air, literally, all right? The emotions are just starting to come into play here. I get a lot of confusion. I have so many questions when I see this card. All right, I want to know who took this picture. I want to know what perspective it's from. I want to know if there's, you know, land close by. I want to know if they just jumped off a boat or if they swam out here on their own. I want to know how they got out here. I want to know, you know, if it's on. But I, I, there's so many questions, okay? I feel seven of cups energy. I feel, you know, when water meets air, which is never a good thing, all right? Um, when you're hit with these crazy emotions and everything collective in the middle of everything, the root of this problem or this disaster, or, you know, the tower moment that we're having right now is a whole lot of lack of emotional clarity. It's um, needing the blanks filled in. It's needing, you know, some kind of explanation as to what the hell's going on here and why we're feeling the way that we're feeling. Okay. Whew. Let me see what the book has to say about that before I move on to the other four cards. All right. The C. All right, the C, here's what it says about the C. The month is January, okay? So this tower moment could be coming in January. It could stem from something that happened in January. Also, that is Aquarian energy in January. End of January is Aquarian, all right? So you could be dealing with an Aquarius or you could something could have happened in or will happen in that season. Um, the words that they want to give you here to think about are wasting, um, loss of ears okay an ancient oh, oh no an accident in an elevator lurching sickness cracks false affection vapors a secret enemy misdirection demons estrangement and chagrin all right look a lot of these you know energies that they're suggesting here what i'm just you know picking up initially are self-inflicted okay think about wasting who's in control of whether or not you waste something all right it's you um you're either wasting away because you're not nourishing yourself with the right things or you are literally being wasteful and excessive and spending and um doing things in excess you know being a glutton this is self-inflicted all right loss of ears I get Van Gogh energy, okay? Again, he drove himself crazy in Nine of Swords energy, a prison of his own mental making. That's why he cut his ear off. He went nuts. It's about mental illness. It's about, you know, not being able to think clearly. Again, self-inflicted. It's like you're doing it to yourself. You're your own worst enemy at that point. It's also choosing not to hear. When you have the loss of ears, you've got them, but you can't find them and you don't know what to do with them. It's like you're choosing not to listen. You're choosing not to hear things. You're choosing to turn your own, you know, volume off, okay? Also, an accident in an elevator. Elevators are a way to make things easier, okay? It's an easy way to the top. Again, a personal choice here to not do the hard work by taking the stairs, all right? Trying to skip ahead, trying to, you know, um advance yourself quicker than you're supposed to trying to rush something not doing what nature intended nature intended for you to walk your ass up that mountain not take an elevator to the top again self-inflicted you're not willing to put in the hard work you're not willing to you know do um the apprentice work right you just want to be you know called the king um we've also got lurching sickness all right when i think of lurching sickness i think of like uh, like either you know lurching up your gut or like slumped over all right that's because you're putting trash food into your body or because your posture sucks because you're choosing to like look down or not take good care of yourself um cracks false affection <laughs> cracks i mean i don't know what cracks is i don't even i can't even go there with that but false affection that's like choosing to ignore your in, um, intuition. It's like pretending to care about things that you don't. Again, personal choices, ignoring red flags, things like that. Um, vapors, vapors are very, you know, elusive and 
fleeting, okay? If that's one of the things that is like surrounding the situation, that means like you understand that this is cloudy. You understand that whatever this is, is not lasting. That's again, and then like a personal choice about whether or not you sit around and watch that vapor, you know, disintegrate, or if you just move on and step out of the cloud. Also secret enemies, misdirection, demons, estrangement and chagrin all right chagrin is like embarrassment or having failed or been humiliated again that's all source energy all this stuff you can only be humiliated all right if you're ashamed of yourself for whatever you did that's a mistake that means that you are not you know the tower is of your own making in this instance collective you guys are thinking yourselves into a tower all of this stuff is like stuff that you're telling yourself is a possibility here, but it's all self-inflicted. It's not like based in reality. It's based in your mind running away with you. There's a lot of emotional confusion and a lot of unanswered things going on for you guys. A lot of blank space, a lot of missing pieces that you guys can't put together. And that's throwing things way off. All right. And it's because you're dealing with a watery situation with swords energy. You're trying to make sense of like overwhelming tower-like emotional stuff. That doesn't make sense ever, okay? It is nonsense and it's supposed to be. You're supposed to find a deeper meaning in it. You're not supposed to find a logical, obvious reason because there's not one. Um, the, the reason is buried and it's obscure for a reason because you have to work for it and figure it out and learn the lesson. All right, second card I got was what's holding you back from the past. <clears throat> I got the ladder, all right? I got, when I saw this one, it just, first of all, someone gave themselves just enough rope to hang themselves with. Um, I can't tell if somebody has escaped, okay? Some bindings and climbed up this ladder, or if somebody, if, I mean, I really, I can't, I can't tell if they, you know, were bound to something on the ground and they finally cut themselves free and took the way out and made an exit and, you know, took the escape route. Or if this is somebody, you know, from above throwing someone else a rope to pull them up. It's also like somebody seeing an opportunity and feeling like it's too far out of reach. You know, like if you're looking from afar, you don't really see that rope. All right. Distance matters. Perspective matters. All right. Do you see this? You don't see that rope at all from back here. You're not seeing like the small things. You're not paying attention to the details. A lot of you feel like some things are unobtainable for you. That has to deal with your past. Your past gives you, you know, you're being too overly general with things. You're allowing things that happened in your past to affect you on a grand scale. You can't see things clearly, all right, because this issue is so big here from the past. It prevents you from moving forward. You use it as an excuse as to why you can't get anywhere or why you can't leave whatever it is you need to leave here. Look, the tower moment here associated with this is if you don't start focusing, all right, you're going to be forced to do something here. Whatever this is from your past, if you allow it to obstruct your movement, you're going to regret that, all right? Because if you focus in close on here, there it is, all right? That's a very easily reachable rope there. It has to deal with all that stuff from the past. All right, let's see what the ladder says. The ladder, all right, that's Tuesday. Um, it's about slander, reversals, creeping sickness, all right? We had lurching sickness, and then we had creeping sickness. Lurching sounds a lot, you know, more slow than creeping. <clears throat> Lurching also you would probably see coming at you. That's in the middle of everything. You feel like you see these things coming at you, like this, these sicknesses or whatever. That's because in the past, one crept up on you. That's what I see here. You didn't see it coming. It was slanderous. It was reversed. It was something you did not expect. It was not, you know, what you signed up for. Um it's like a forged will insomnia loss of hair detention theft cafard jealousy an accident in a restaurant in and in the nation okay look i looked these words up okay because i had no idea what um cafard 
It's C A F A R D <clears throat> and inanation. All right. Cafard is depression. That's what you're experiencing right now. And then inanation. I forget what that one was. It was something really specific. I feel like it was like pus filling up in something. Oh no, it's exhaustion caused by a lack of nourishment. All right. Not feeding yourself. It's like starving yourself to death, basically. <clears throat> again it's like um do you want a hand up or do you want a hand out is like what i got with this that's in the past okay a lot of times you've offered people handouts and um or hands up and they've taken it as a hand out but in the past all right there was a lot of shady behavior a lot of seven of swords energy is what i picked up on with this a lot of people lying a lot of people not doing you know what they said they were going to do a lot of people reversing going back on their word <clears throat> losing your hair the insomnia stuff like that that is you know literally pulling your own hair out with the nine of swords energy there's theft literally on here it talks about things being stolen from you it also talks about forged wills that's somebody you know getting a monetary gain that is not deserved okay that's what that is it's thievery it's somebody you know who didn't earn something that is you know laying claim to it um, that's all the stuff that's happened to you in the past. An accident in a restaurant, all right? <clears throat> but then at the same time, starving. There's some kind of a trauma. I feel like those two are related. That inanition, it's... Um... Let me see if I'm saying that wrong. What does it sound like? Inanition. Inanition. Inanition in initiation all right it's about you know exhaustion caused from a lack of nourishment it's like you are so hungry you can't even hold your head up you're about to starve okay but at the same time we're talking about this accident in a restaurant that's parallel it's like whatever that trauma was that happened for you all right say you know your trauma happened in a relationship whatever whenever you get into that dynamic and it reminds you of that past thing it's a huge trigger and when you are reminded of that accident you immediately pull away or you know or you feast on whatever that is and you know gorge or starve yourself whichever you latch onto it all right you unhealthily interact with it <clears throat> all right so that was what is at the top of everything um the card that i got for how you feel about your inner self was the ancestor here also he is faceless he also reminds me of the guy on game of thrones um the red-headed dude that was like obsessed with brianne all right he reminds me of him he definitely looks like he's from the north definitely you know house stark here definitely wolf pack energy lone wolf all right how you feel about yourself on the inside all right i have to tell you first of all ancestor card you do feel you know connected to your ancestors but at the same time you uh, you don't understand what's going on here Th this guy's faceless <clears throat> you don't know which way to look all right your third your like eyes are covered here i get two of swords energy with this from the um hoodoo tarot the girl that had her spiritual eyes and her regular eyes blinded, she was, you know, supposed to be four-eyed and be able to see all kinds of things. And said all of them were purposely, like, closed shut. How you see yourself, all right? There's certain things you don't want to see about yourself. Also, you can't see yourself correctly. All right, when you look in the mirror here, you, um, you don't see your face. You don't understand where you come from. A lot of you guys feel disconnected from the ancestors. <clears throat> a lot of you are trying to, you know, you wonder what they would think right now. You're very confused. You guys don't know what kind of face to put on right now. Is it a brave one? Is it a scared one? Is it, you know, um, a truthful one? Is it no face at all? Some of you don't want to show your face, literally. This is a very guarded energy that I feel with this. He's wearing a giant winter coat. He refuses to show his face or any kind of expression to give anybody any kind of hints as to what's going on. How you feel about yourself right on the inside, you don't feel like anyone sees you. You don't feel like um, you can see anything right now. <coughs> You're also seeing yourself 
That's very, you know, closed off and guarded. It's almost like you're wrapped in bubble wrap is what I'm seeing with that. And y'all, I apologize for my voice. I've been doing like at least 13 reads a day and uh, my voice is getting trashed. <clears throat> All right, the card that I pulled <clears throat> for the near future coming up, or not the near future, the outside energy is the tunnel. All right, do you see that? Your girl here was born in West Virginia, okay? Very mountainous Appalachian state. When my family would drive from Atlanta back to see our family up near Pittsburgh, you know, at the border of West Virginia and Pennsylvania, um, we would have to go through these crazy tunnels that look like this, straight through these mountains, okay? I remember as a kid being absolutely terrified every time I went through this tunnel. I never like understood how man could build a tunnel that would support that big ass mountain. <clears throat> it made no sense to me. I never wanted to go in, but my dad, you know, we always had to go in it. All right. It would take days to drive over the Appalachian mountains. You go straight through them. It's way easier. But I remember times getting stuck in there. I remember times when the lights went out in the tunnel. I remember, um, having my first probably panic attack in that tunnel or you feeling like I was never going to exit that tunnel um there's a lot of fear all right from the outside world it's like the great unknown um a lot of the paths that you feel that the universe or other people have been providing to you are very mysterious they're very shrouded you don't know what you're getting yourself into with a lot of these things I do also feel like um, I have to warn you because this, you know, reading is about tower moments. The one, the tower moments that are from the outside, you don't see coming, all right? Um, <clears throat> they're being, you know, secretive on purpose. It's very tempting, whatever this is. It's very mysterious. I feel like that there's, there's energies of people I have to warn you about trying to tempt, lure you in. You have to know that you don't know what you're getting yourself into with some of these. You need to make sure you get in your page of swords energy and like thoroughly research what's going on with that. I need to read you um, <clears throat> the ancestor card and this tunnel card. I'm going to do those together because I feel like these two, you know, go together. I feel like the way that other people are reacting, the outside world and how that influences has a big impact on how you're feeling about yourself. So because the outside world is so dicey and you don't see any clear way through or to what it is that you want here, it also seems very intimidating and very um, <clears throat> unpredictable, all right? I feel like that's why you don't know what face to put on here. You don't know if you should smile at this tunnel or if you should, you know, be afraid of it. You don't want that. You're both hiding from each other, whatever this is. <clears throat> Neither one of you want to show your cards. Where are these cards at? So let's see. This is such a weird deck. Y'all, and this deck is only $10. Can we just speak about that for a second? Because that's insane. All right, the ancestor. The month there is April. And this is what's, you know, how you feel about yourself. April. Spring energy, Taurus energy. Um... <clears throat> Um, hereditary weakness, thrush, loss of money, a false statement, morbid dependency, staggering sickness, more sickness, all right, not staggered. It's like one thing after another. They're spread out now. Um, temperature, McGrims, paranoia, an overdose, imprisonment, unstable furniture interesting all right first of all i don't know what several of these words are i'm gonna look a couple of these up i'm gonna show you guys the list um champerty and grims all right look at all these weird ass words on here do you see this let your girl bust out her google here what does that even mean champerty an agreement in which a person with no previous interest in a lawsuit finances it with a view to sharing the disputed property if the suit succeeds. 
what? I am a lawyer and I have never heard of that, but then we call that vexatious litigation. <coughs> so basically, this has to deal with how you feel about yourself, okay? You're feeling either you're the person who wants to back this endeavor or you're wanting someone to invest in you to fight your good fight. There's an, you know, it's an energy of getting your nose involved in some shit that has nothing to do with you, all right? It says um, a person who has no previous interest in a lawsuit, which means it's none of your business, okay? All of a sudden, you've got this, you know, hugely vested interest in whatever this is. <clears throat> because now you feel like you have a stake in the outcome. That's how you're feeling, okay? That's going to lead to a tower moment. If you didn't care how it turned out before, if it has nothing to do with you, why are you so concerned with it right now? All right? You need to really be looking at that. What was the other weird word there? McGrims. Me Grims, all right? God, it's like my brother's grim. What the hell? Me Grims. <clears throat> depression, all right? A whim or a fancy. This is like when you're depressed, all right? You go eat your feelings is what I feel like with this. I like that word better. It sounds way more appropriate. Me Grims. I got a case of the McGrims, not the, you know, lay off me. I'm starving, all right? It's God. Chris Farley rip um more depression more anxiety you feel low all right you do it, and it's because you're like um you've got I feel like you've got unreasonable expectations I just gotta tell you that it's talking about false statements losses of money thrush all right thrush is a lot like strep throat I feel like that affects the throat chakra hereditary weaknesses this is like inherited stuff from your parents a lot of y'all picked up some really bad traits for mommy and daddy. You guys um, try to buy affection, some of you. I'm reading you to filth today, collective, because these are supposed to be that way. They're supposed to be dark and make you think about shit. But also take with a grain of salt. I wanted to say that was the purpose when I re was um, reviewing this. I see the humor in this, all right? That people put way too much stock into tarot and divination instead of, you know, just doing what feels right. There are people out there who will literally like watch some of these readings and just ignore all better judgments and their feeling and their gut and just be like, well, cards told me, you know, do this, jump off a building. So I'm going to, this is like a, a rip on that. All right. It's like telling us, you know, this, these are such fantastical, crazy things. Um, just the absurdity of it all is what makes me, you know, have a more lighthearted view and see the humor. All right. In tragedy, we need that. All right. <clears throat> overdose it's like doing things too much being paranoid nine of swords energy unstable furniture right that's like four of wands energy it's like y'all are gonna sit your ass in a chair that only has you know two or three legs and you know damn well you're gonna fall it's um setting yourself up for failure a lot of that was inherited though all right this has to do with ancestor a lot of you guys are you know feeling like you're having to you know right a generational wrong or heal ancestral wounds or curses you might have to. <clears throat> I, I feel like you're trying to figure out who to pin it on. You're trying to figure out which ancestor to blame. You can't you can't figure it out. Y'all need to do some past life regression. All right. And then the final card that I pulled for you guys, which is what you don't know is coming. You know, what's in, you know, heading your way. <laughs> I didn't read the meaning of it. I just looked at it and I was concerned. All right. The burning head. <laughs> Can we take a look at that? First of all, he looks like he's in that water from the beginning. I don't, I mean, I don't get a lot. I'm going to be honest with you from this card. I have not meditated on it for a super long time. But when I was doing the flip through, you know, the immediate thing I saw, I, first of all, it reminded me of the night bus from Harry Potter with that crazy, you know, Jamaican talking shrunken head. All right, it looks like a shrunken head. It looks like, you know, voodoo. It looks like um, some spell work. It's definitely fire energy. I got Queen of Wands from this. Um, the fire is burning white, all right? White hot is the hottest fire that you can have. Yet yeah, this person is still remaining, you know, this other color here. They do look like they're in a sea of emotions. They look like they're coming out of that, all right? From, you know, out of the water, like, um, and bursting into flames. 
I get like a volcanic feeling, like an eruption, burning head. It makes me feel like whatever this nine of swords energy that's been going on here, it's hitting its peak, all right? That's what we don't see coming. It's like the volcano is going to erupt is what I got with this. Um, Let me, I didn't read tunnel. I just realized that, sorry guys. Um, I'm gonna do this burning head one and then I'm gonna do the outside one last. <coughs> Where are you, burning head? I love this little pocket-sized book. This deck is batshit, and I am so here for it. So here for it. Where are you, burning head? The burning head Sunday, okay. Bafflement, loss of saliva. That's an interesting one. That's also dehydration. All right, drink your water, guys. You don't see that coming. Drink your water, a forged deed. Now you have a forged will and a forged deed. Some of y'all are right, very careful, all right, with contracts, ownerships, things like that. Read everything, all right? An impasse, that's, you know, when you go to mediation and you try to sort something out and when you can't reach an agreement, um, you declared an impasse and at that point during you know the legal proceeding you then have to take the matter before a judge you have to bring in a third party to make the decision that's what you don't see coming here that there is no you know making amends here there is no coming to you know a mutually uh, you know agreeable resolution it's going to take a referee it's going to take an outside force it's going to take an act of god all right you don't see that coming to you know regulate whatever this is extradition all right that's something being taken away all right a boating accident that's that in the middle all right look oh shit <clears throat> a boating accident in the center of everything whatever that boating accident is it's gonna you know leave you stranded in the middle of whatever this is that was at the center of everything and what you don't see coming is the boating accident a lot of y'all are thinking about venturing out onto that sea be careful um, it talks about chillblains. I don't know what that is. C H I L B L A I N S. Gonna have to Google that one for you. All right. It also talks about delayed desires. Want, that's like Knight of Pentacles in reverse. Wandering sickness. Um, more sickness. All right. Now the sickness follows you wherever you go. That's what you don't see coming. If you don't shake this energy, do you see how the sickness progresses though? At first, it's like real sluggish, and then all of a sudden, it's creeping. It comes out of nowhere, like from the past. Whatever that past one was, was shocking and scary and came out of nowhere, and now it creeps up on you in the present at the worst times. And then it becomes like an intermittent one where it comes and goes, depending on what situation you're in. Now, what's coming towards you, all right? <clears throat> Wandering sickness. It's going to follow you. if You don't cure it, okay? Um, an impediment, evil companions, and despondency. You guys have had several references to devil energy, evil um, com companions, things like that. These are toxic things that you need to get rid of. You very much need to, you know, extradite from your life. Okay? Despondency. That's just like not being into it, all right? This is like Ace of Wands in reverse, like not having any motivation. But what is that weird ass word? Chillblains. <clears throat> Soul blains. What does that mean? <laughs> so I just saw a review for this deck saying it's anxious and irritable tarot deck. I mean, it is the Nine of Swords. The whole deck has felt like Nine of Swords so far. It's literally the first time I've ever read with it. Chill blains. Oh, it's showing a hand inflammation of small blood vessels on the skin caused due to repeated exposure to cold it's like frostbite wow by the pentacles energy much all right so that's that one with the burning head that's what you don't see coming towards you all right if you make the same mistakes if you don't cure this sickness um it's coming back to get your ass all right literally frostbite you this time you might lose an appendage like the yeah all right so the outside energy what's going on here with that tunnel card uh, the great abyss okay <clears throat> the tunnel the day is monday it's um sexual disturbance 
It's a swindle. I see a pattern here. This is double energy. Right after, all right, Sunday is like the holy day. The day after that, Monday, now the devil's coming back, okay? Um, it's sexual disturbance, right? That's like, you know, sex addiction, whatever, being obsessed, you know, being addicted to something. Um, a swindle, the devil is a liar. Loss of wits, the devil makes you do crazy things. He makes you, you know, see things that aren't there. The devil plays tricks. Um, he takes away your better judgment, makes you lose your wits. Disease of the blood, all right? <laughs> The devil gets under your skin, okay? Also, blood, red, devil color, okay? Whatever this is, though, um, this outside energy, that's how this sickness got into you. Literally, they injected it into you. You didn't know what you were getting yourself into. It was that. Also, I get diseases of the blood and like um, the sexual stuff and the addictive energy. This person feels like an addiction. Like some of you are addicted to whatever this person does or makes you feel. You need to be very wary of that. It also talks about angst, false trust, an irrational, um, an irrational project, an unpleasant discovery, bad luck, an execution, all right, death energy, or someone carrying out a plan, boredom and panic. That's what the outside energy is causing, you know, the towers on you. Or what's, you know, helping bring these towers in. <laughs> You're getting blindsided by this energy, all right, because it's devil energy. And devil energy is almost identical to the lovers. You can't tell the two apart here, and that's a dangerous game that you're playing. Um, I feel like you're going into this tunnel against your better judgment. You already know that there's a lot that's left to be a mystery. You already know that there's a lot, you know, left to be revealed here, especially in the emotional department. Be real careful, all right? If you want to go in that tunnel, you don't know how long it is. You don't know if there's a place to turn around. You don't know if there'll be any lights, food, whatever, all right? You don't know how long you'll be in that tunnel. Do you really want to go in there? All right. All right, collective. That's what I got for you. <clears throat> I'm going to do a quicker version of these. All right. For all 12 signs today. So tune in for that. See what, you know, terrors are coming your way. I will catch you next time, guys. I love you so much. Talk to you later. Bye.